Hey everybody, Nick with Retro Pixel Digital. I have a really neat announcement to let you guys know about. So Unreal and Faceware have just joined forces to just help support the indie community uh, working with the digital MetaHumans creator. Um, really exciting stuff and uh, they've included us in this promotion. So uh, we have a special promo code. It's called RetroPixel and the instructions are going to be in the uh, YouTube link here. Um, but uh, this will actually get you started with both Faceware Studio and Glassbox Live Client plugin. So that'll give you six months free use uh, for indie and non-commercial use only. Um, and that uh, within two months, if you as long as you redeem that within two months, so before uh, June 30th, 2021, um, then you can just use our code to get yourself a free access to both. Well, you use uh, MetaHumans Creator, and then you can have uh, Glassbox plugin, which is the plugin that connects Faceware Studio and uh, Unreal Engine, and then of course you can have Faceware Studio. Really neat stuff. I've been using it for a while. Um, I mean, a, a little bit about Faceware. I've been working with Faceware for a while now, and I've just seen how they've really been taking steps to evangelize, support, and equip the indie community with AAA production quality facial tracking solutions, and to test such a groundbreaking development by Epic is amazing. So uh, prior to this moment, it's been difficult, time-consuming, and costly to create and animate like photorealistic rigs and as a key partner with unreal faceware is actually removing the animation barriers by providing access to a production quality facial tracking tool capable of driving meta human assets so faceware is uh used by some of the best studios in the world and recently updated their deep learning jaw tracking technology which gives you all the tools you need to start creating amazing facial animation and we'll get into that a little bit here in a minute uh, and unlike AR Kit, Faceware Studio provides you with much more control over the data stream. And while you're free to use your own digital characters, I personally highly recommend working with Epic's lifelike MetaHumans and MetaHuman Creator. Uh, and um, if you make something really awesome, make sure to tag and share your results with Faceware on all of their social media channels. Those are also listed in the description of this YouTube video. And also, there's a link to the description of the Faceware Discord channel. All artists are invited to join and discuss with each other their progress and results. I'll be on that Discord channel as Van City Nikolai, so definitely make sure to drop by and say hello. So once you've got it all set up, the first thing you're going to want to do is go to facewaretech.com and then you're going to click on Start Animating. Now, that's going to give the uh, a few things here, and there's a sample uh, and some studio and stuff. Uh, so these these document this documentation will kind of go over what we're doing here. But uh, just to skip everything here, we're going to download the uh, Faceware MetaHuman release package. And uh, once you've downloaded that, uh, I'll show you how to do it. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to use uh, once you have the MetaHumans. Uh, created our uh, creator installed on your uh, unreal engine we're just going to create a new project uh, i'm just going to put that into a folder that makes more sense to me uh ue projects and select that and uh, we'll just create that project so we're going to give it a second here until the uh the project is created and then we're going to use this uh folder the file which is right here uh, this is the face. This is the zip file that you'll download. It's called the Faceware MetaHuman Release Package. If you open that up, it's got three folders, and these folders are folders that we're going to drop directly into the uh, the image or sorry the uh, project file once it's created. So it looks like it's ready. So you can just easily go here um, in Unreal, and then you right click on that and you show in folder. Once that pops up, you're going to see these guys here. Take the uh, contents of the zip folder, grab all three of those, bring them over here. So I'm going to ask you to save over one file, I believe. Yeah, we'll replace that file in a destination. Make sure you do that before you launch the project, because otherwise things will be in use and it will be uh, a little bit of a more difficult process. So uh, with that in mind, what I'll do is I'm just going to double click on the MetaHumans project folder. And that will launch the project. So... Um, another thing that we want to do is maybe pull up bridge in between. This is Quixel Bridge. You'll have to install that separately. Um, but it's really neat because there's a little button right here. Um, 
when you're at home, you just click on this. And this has, uh, I think, 50 uh, metahumans that are pre-created. Once you uh, use the creator to create your own stuff, you'll be able to drop them in here. You can name them and do all that other stuff, and then you can do the exact same process. So uh, for this one, what we're going to be doing is we're going to use a tray. Um, I have uh, downloaded it already, so you'll click on it. You'll click download. Once that's done, you'll have the little blue check mark, and then you'll be able to export it directly into your active project. So what we'll do is wait until MetaHumans has uh, loaded. Uh, once it has, I'm just going to go ahead and export that guy in there. But before I do that, I'm just going to show you a little bit about how everything works here. So I'm going to minimize this. This is the sample project with the extra files that we've copied into it. Now, one of the first things that's going to happen is we're going to see the glass box pro, um, folder, or sorry, the uh, license thing come up. So this is something that you're going to want to do. Um, and when you sign up for your free six-month uh, six uh, trial through uh, using my code, uh, you'll actually be able to uh, get a code here for that. It'll be good for six months. Now, I'm going to copy my code in there, but I'm going to lock it out while we do that. And then activate my license. There you go. That's what you'll get. Okay, perfect. So now that we're in the scene itself, I'm going to minimize that so you guys can see it. My monitor is a little bit big. Okay, and then uh, I can stretch that into the spot there. So, okay, first of all, I like to kind of go back here. <laughs> Don't see all that mess there. Uh, and I'm going to switch over to the near uh, camera. Pilot that guy. And so you can kind of see what's going on right now. Now, what I've done is I've gone into the settings here and I've switched over the engine scalability settings to medium. Um, it just makes it a lot easier for me to do, uh, to deal with. And um, if you guys want performance and you're having performance issues, what I would do is go to settings and then project settings. And then in here, uh, until it's render time, go into, sorry, under engine. So you'll be under this engine here go down to rendering and then scroll down until you see the two by themselves, which will be, oops, too far. Ray tracing, turn that guy off. You're gonna have to restart your project. And that'll speed things up at least while you're using it. If you've got something 3090 or something really high end, then uh, I would write, you can you could probably do it real time. But just for the f uh, for those folks that don't have like the highest end card right now, um, MetaHuman is very resource uh, intensive. So if you don't have something crazy like that, you might want to play around with these settings just so you can get a little bit more uh, visuals going uh, real time stuff like that because it just uh, you won't be able to see the lips and everything and you want to get in there and fine tune everything um, and so while you're doing that process the the, the least uh, the less resources you're using during that period is probably better so here we go uh, it's about to launch You will need a beefy machine for this stuff. Just saying. Okay, so now we can get this uh, project settings out of the way. Uh, and I'm going to switch back to the near camera. Because you can see LOD level, uh, it's a medium right now. So if you go to the near camera, you're going to see better quality. I'm going to keep it at medium. Um, so right now, because we've copied those files, this isn't just the, the regular sample project. It is the, uh, the faceware version of it. So... Um, this one is actually plugged directly into Facewear right now, and um, I'm going to launch uh, Facewear Studio right now so that we can get the other uh, part of this plugged in. It's going to be using my webcam, um, and I'll bring that in here really quickly. Show you a few things about on the Facewear end. So you are going to want to spend a bunch of time with Facewear um, getting your profile all set up, but if you can see here, um, this is my facewear, uh, and I have a profile loaded that I've played around with, and I just need to calibrate my neutral pose, which will be this. Now you see some uh, mocap. It's actually not too bad. I've spent a little bit of time just getting everything working. So 
Uh, now that you've got that guy, uh, what you want to do is uh, optimize for real time. That'll get you the most FPS you can. If you have a, like you want to have at least 30 frames per second for rendering. If you don't have that, you can have some major issues. If you've got a camera that does 60 or 120, definitely do that. You got to get your lighting right. But uh, when you're doing the frame uh, handover through the streaming, um, the more frames the merrier because uh, when you do the actual render, it's going to cause some, uh, some really quick movements. It's just not going to look good uh, when you do the final render. But uh, we'll get to that someday. Uh, and then now what we want to do is uh, that's optimized for real time. You've got all your thing all set up like that. Uh, you'll switch over to your streaming panel here. And uh, I would set the control uh, schema to standard. Uh, if it's legacy, you're only going to get some movements. AR kit doesn't seem to work as well as I liked it. Um, and then uh, we want to stream to the client. So once it's streaming to the client, move that guy out of the way. And um, so now you'll have this scene here. So we're going to do a quick simulate. And uh, as you can see, we have not real time, but we have something close. So I could switch that to like low. It's not going to look as pretty, but you're going to see a little bit more. So that right there shows us if actually if we switch to scalability low, you'll notice that the uh, head rotation is lost. It's just a resource saving tactic, I think. So um, now that we know that the MetaHuman's base model is working fine, this is when it gets fun because now we can bring in our Quixel guy. So I've got Trey here. I'm going to export him in. Um, it's going to say some stuff, but if you minimize that, you're going to see a whole bunch of messages coming up. So that's importing all of Trey's stuff. So that'll take a minute, but you're going to see that added into the content folder around this area here. And it does take a minute. Trey is a very high definition character. So yeah, what's we're gonna pretty much the 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 whole thing that we're gonna be doing with all this stuff is we're going to just be matching what the uh, the FWBP or sorry blueprint so the face war blueprint that is in this file we're gonna be matching all the very important uh, things in there. Um, so the variables and and everything in the in the nodes that are in there there just we need to copy that because it's not going to work right out of box so i'm going to go to metahumans i'm going to grab tray here and um bp tray is the one we want to drag into the scene we're going to keep both of them just for now um really handy to see what her details are here for the transform so 130 negative 20 and 20 30 negative 20 and I'm going to say zero because he's a lot taller than she is. Giving him a 90 degree rotation. Actually, I'm going to do minus 50 on, no, minus 30 on him and maybe a zero. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. We got to do a uh, 20 on that one. <laughs> Sorry, it's this one, a zero on her. Or maybe a minus five. That way they're both in the scene. You can kind of see what's going on. Um, so... Yeah, first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to go to the body. Actually, sorry, that is a lie. The body is not in the body folder. It's in the male, tall, normal weight, body, and then we're going to right-click on that guy, and we're going to click skeleton, and we're going to assign the skeleton. So we want to go in here and make sure there's going to be two of them, uh, metahuman base scale. We want the one that's in the game sample metahuman. Click on that one. And accept. So that's binding his skeleton to the face wear skeleton. So uh, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go into tray. This one's a little easier. It's in the face where it should be. And we're going to right click on that one. And we're going to skeleton, assign skeleton. And then we're going to find again the face architect skeleton. And uh, that is going to be the sample archetype. Sorry. There you go. Now, that's bound the skeleton for his face as well. So you think that would be it, but that's definitely not it. So we're going to go here, and we're going to go to the BP tray, so his uh, tray's blueprint. And we're going to open that guy. So now we've got his node base, and we're going to want to go and work in the content, and I believe it's in the sample metahumans. Sorry, we got to figure out where this went. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we got here the blueprints. I think it's 
You know what? Let's just do this. I'm gonna do gonna look for actually click on her. Yeah, it's a lot out. BP Meta Human One. So that's what she's called. BP Meta Human One. And we're gonna find the FW one. So we're gonna double click on that one. And that should open up in here. So yeah, trick is to just go ahead and grab all of her stuff. So we'll have BP Tray on the right and MetaHuman FW on the left. So first thing that we want to do before we start playing with nodes, we want to grab any of the variables that they're going to uh, be calling upon um, because otherwise we're going to get errors and it's going to it's going to give you a nightmare. So we're going to take the only variable here. Uh, it's going to right click and we're going to copy that. And we're going to paste that guy in here. Actually, you know what? While we're at it, let's go in here. Let's grab this face. We're live as well. Just go. Because you can't copy from there. You got to copy it from here. So we'll copy that. We'll go back into BP tray and we'll go to the top level and we're going to right click and paste that. That's going to put it where it needs to be, which is here. Uh, now that we've done that, we're going to grab all of the nodes from here. We'll right click and copy that. And we're going to BP tray and we'll get rid of these old erroneous ones. Okay, and then we're going to control V on that one, and you're going to see all the nodes are in there. That looks good. So first thing I'm going to do is we're going to change some um, of the uh, blueprint information. So click on face, and we're going to see here we got the animation mode is uh, use animation blueprint. That is what we want, but the anim class is wrong. So we're going to click the drop down, and we're going to use uh, the FW metahuman face for that one. And then we're going to want to go to the body. And we're going to switch this animation asset to animation blueprint. And we're going to go in there and we're going to say uh, body. So that there looks pretty good. I'm going to compile and save this. Okay. And I'm going to minimize that just in case. And then we're just going to do a quick uh, simulate. And hey, ha ha. What are we missing? Hmm. Oh, head rotation. There you go. So we'll stop that. Uh, to fix that, we just click on this guy here. And you're going to see use face word, uh, face wear head rotation. You can enable that and simulate. Look at that. Looks beautiful. So uh, I'd recommend not deleting her. We're going to go in here and act her hidden in game. And then we're going to just locate. I'm going to change her on the x axis. I'll put her at zero as well. Oh wait, no, that's, sorry, it's uh, this one. It doesn't matter, really. And then we'll uh, pop him back into like negative 20. There you go. So he's in the middle there. So now you can hit play and you will have Trey doing what you want to do. It's really neat. So uh, what I'd recommend doing here is I haven't done any of this stuff, but uh, you can go and play with the animation curves just to get that looking real good. Um, we want to pop this up to like cinematic. It's not going to react the same way, but uh, you'll be able to see kind of the better quality. We don't have ray tracing on, remember that? But it looks pretty good. So what you can do is crank up all your settings, do your animation, save that into the render queue, and you are good to go. Uh, once you do the motion capture, uh, if you're using a, a suit like Xsense or something like that, what you want to do is you want to turn off the... Uh, we use face or head rotation. The best thing to do would have a face, uh, face uh, camera that would uh, capture you directly without any head movement, and you'd use the XN suit or uh, whatever you're using to uh, to drive the um, the body itself that would drive the neck and uh, give you that that kind of rotation um, a lot easier and a better result. Anyway, that is it. Uh, make sure you guys take advantage of this uh, this amazing face wear limited time offer. It is good for six months, but you need to get in there in the next two months uh, because that code retro pixel that you're going to be using on the website, that is good for the next two months. So give it a shot. Let me know what you think. Any questions, just, just fire them at me here. I'll, I'll be as quick as I can to uh, answer any of these questions. But with that, uh, hopefully you guys have a great day. Thank you very much.